Okay guys, so we fixed the problem with the power input board. One channel is working. This is the amplifier module which has short circuit direct from the positive to the negative rail. And most likely the problem is going to be with these output devices, which are rather strange looking things actually. You can see down there, so these are quite wide and have two bolts holding them down. I expect they're probably bipolar transistors in a really unusual package, but I guess we'll find out. So if we just measure across these, so this would be base emitter, it's a couple of ohms, base collector, collector emitter, so that just reads completely short. Because these are in parallel, they're all going to read the same anyway, regardless if only one is short or they're all short or something else is giving us the short reading. Just swing this around to the other side, so again, yeah, these are really short. I'd expect they both would on either side because we see it's short directly from the positive to the negative. So probably all the emitters are connected to these resistors and the emitters are connected together between the positive and negative half of the amplifier, but it could be the other way around. I mean, we have seen in some cases different topology there. So they all read short as well. It looks like if we undo all these bolts here, this will actually come off. Yeah, there's a couple standoffs here as well. Or we could just unsolder all these transistors actually. That's another possibility and leave them bolted to the heat sink. I'd say we have to unsolder them anyway to figure out which is short. So let's just lift all the legs off. I think it's going to be easy we'll have a quick look if not we'll unbolt them so what tends to happen with these you can see that the legs are soldered into like these little eyelets i think it's a good description for those that appears to be touching that but i'd say that is the emitter resistor anyway yeah 0.5 ohms seems very sensible for that okay so you might find that when you unsolder these the actual eyelets come out of the board instead of the leg lifting up let's try i think if i get a hold of the eyelets so the heat doesn't go down that way i might be able to just flip the leg up although i think it probably i can't yeah you get this hot and then just try to uh, lift it out and leave this thing in the board yeah it came i'm not sure how much holding the bottom of that thing down helped to make sure it stayed in the boat to be honest out it comes bit of plastic came off is that a broken housing on this uh, transistor if it is a transistor i'm sure we will find out Yeah, these seem to be coming off quite nicely. So I'll get all these unsoldered and then we can have a look to see what we have here. Okay, so I've got the PCB off. I had to unsolder all those large devices all the way around, put all the tabs stayed in. If this is a date code on here, 5101, and this is from 2001, so 24 years old. And I seem to recall seeing somewhere when I was looking for schematics, which I didn't find, that that's about right for these amplifiers, I think. Okay, so 24-year-old amplifier. These are the output devices I can see. So 2SC3264. They're all the same. So this is one of these pseudo-class a B amplifiers, which has probably all NPN transistors. And the way this works, as I recall, is this inverts the phase to the base drive of what would normally be the PMP side of the amplifier, something like that. Okay. I'm not sure if, if these are something commonly available. I suspect they might not be. Let's see if they're actually short. So, assuming base collector, emitter, well there's no short there, let's go to diode range.
Reads like a diode, reads like a diode, not short. That one's short. So that one is definitely short. That reads okay. So it looks like we have one short circuit on this side of the amp. Reads okay. I'm expecting at least one of these to be short. Is it the same position? Yeah. I wonder if there's something to do with where the ventilation is. This one has failed on both sides. I mean, they're all in parallel, so there's no electrical reason I can think of particularly that would say it has to be this one that's shorted opposite that one. So we have two of those short let's see if we can find these things first I mean ideally I'd like to replace all of them and let's have a look on the PCB so we have I would say these two are the drivers this is probably the one that balances the two sides of the amplifier and there's two more here as well probably but pre-drivers so yeah imagine drivers pre-drivers and the balancing one a couple more power devices so let's look at the power devices first so yeah, I'd expect that to read lower because it'll have a base emitter resistor. That's a 15 ohm resistor. What's this more? Seventy-seven. Eighty-eight. So not that one, okay. That also reads similar. That reads like a junction, doesn't read short. So you'd probably have to just take those out to be certain, but I think they're okay. Then we have the two here on the metal bracket, so probably easier to measure these from the other side. Do you see a junction here and here? Yeah, so that looks like a PMP transistor. Another one, could be complementary. Yeah, it looks like it is. Okay, and then we have this one which is balancing the two sides of the amplifier. Usually MPN, yeah, MPN, it looks okay. So all those look okay, and that makes me think probably everything further back than that will be okay as well. So normally if like you have a short in the output and it's damaged stuff, it kind of works its way back like a cascade failure. In fact, I think that's actually what it is called. So if we're getting further back and we don't see a problem, it probably means that everything further back than that is okay. So this one certainly needs output devices. There's a bit of stuff back here. This is probably part of the protection circuit. I mean, it does have a protect signal to the relay on that input board. But I have no particular reason to suspect I've got a problem with that. I think we need to replace the faulty output devices first. So, 2SC3264. Well, I can certainly find these on AliExpress and there's a number of different sellers to be quite honest, so they are available. Markings look very much like my original ones. Okay. So we could try those. Another possibility would be to remove the two short circuit ones. This one and this one. Or just leave them on there, but just don't connect them, okay? So if I leave these two disconnected and I put the board back on 
can actually all this I can run this amplifier with just four on each channel I'm not going to run it in anger so not at high power obviously these do need to be replaced but if I do that and it works then we can say basically everything else is okay and we just get the transistors yeah so let's do that I do have audio, it's a bit quiet, eh? So the amplifier channel is working without the transistors in, it's just quieter, okay? But I'd say there's no major problem with that one, so what we'll do is we'll order some more transistors. There's no volume control on this, so it is literally just amplified. And in the meantime, I can just take this amplifying module out. We'll have another look at it while we wait for the parts and just see if we can figure out why the volume is lower. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that. A few different techniques on this video, how to work on these amplifiers. Let me know what you think down there in the channel below. And I look forward to seeing you all soon again on the Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.